Namaste, everybody, and welcome. So, um, yesterday we completed step six of exercise one observing the self by the self. And so now we have been through six of the seven steps of exercise one. The whole purpose of these steps is to keep referring to what is being said and trying to see that reality that is being indicated within ourselves. If you see, it is very simple to read through the seven steps. It may also seem simple as information. And it may seem like, why are we so repetitive about this? But even though we may have it as information, bringing it in our living is quite another matter. So whatever we keep repeating, it is just an indication for you. It is a reminder, sort of, to actually Churn that within yourself and try to observe it within yourself, the feelings that are being referred to. So, first of all, when we said, you know, observe your imagination in the very first step, particularly try to see the feeling in the imagination. And you have to do this every moment. If I want to be happy every moment, I have to make sure that I take care of every moment within myself. That means I must be aware of the feeling that I have at every moment. Without awareness, I harbor all sorts of feelings and then I suffer the unhappiness associated with it and I may not realize what to do for it. So it seems like a hopeless situation. It seems like life is meant to be like this and I cannot do anything to change it. But if I see that perhaps my assumptions about things were not quite correct and if I go through these steps I may be able to see that the feeling that I have at any moment, when I ask this question, what we said in step two, is it naturally acceptable to me or not? Another way of saying it is, do I want to continue with it or not? You will notice that anything that is, any feeling that is naturally acceptable to you, you want to stay with that, any feeling that is not naturally want, acceptable to you, you want to come out of it. Similarly, in step three, when we ask, am I comfortable with the feeling or not? You will notice that whenever you have a feeling that is naturally acceptable to you, you are calm, you are comfortable. Whenever you have a feeling that is not naturally acceptable to you, you are a little disturbed. You are in contradiction. You are not in harmony. And we also know, or at least as information we have, that harmony is happiness. To be in harmony, is to be happy. So we are not referring to excitement as happiness, but that being calm state, that being in harmony within, that is happiness. Now unless and until I am consciously aware of that state within me, I may be mistaking happiness for something else. Then in step four, when we ask the question, 
who is deciding this feeling. This is one of the most um, one of the most eye-opening questions. Because when you become conscious of the fact that the feeling that is there within you is not a result of the outside. It's not a result of the situation outside. It's not because of the other human being who misbehaved. It is something that is very much my own doing, my own decision, my own choice. That comes as a very big shift in our whole perception of things. Then again, if it is just information, we may not be able to see its practicality. But if we actually bring it in our living and we experience that feeling and we experience bringing our feeling in line with the natural acceptance and seeing that we are comfortable, we are happy, even though the situation outside has not changed, even though the other person has not changed, that is extremely revealing and very liberating at the same time. Because then I can see that my moods, my happiness is all my own doing. So I am responsible, I am 100% responsible for my own happiness. Now I don't have to be dependent on somebody outside. I don't have to depend on the situation outside being in my control. See, all the while when I was not conscious, I was trying to be in harmony and it seemed very, very difficult because I could not seem to be in harmony until I have to change every situation outside. So I kept trying to change the outside, trying to control my environment, trying to make it as similar as what I wanted it to be so that I could be in harmony. This is what I was trying. I was trying to change every person that I interact with so that I can be in harmony because I didn't know any other way. And that is obviously very exhausting and very unrewarding because every now and then there will be somebody, some situation, some person who will not behave or the situation will not be what I think it should be then what? And when there are so many situations, so many people that I deal with, to try and change each one of those, obviously is a very difficult, very formidable task. So therefore the struggling, therefore the unhappiness, therefore the suffering. So the moment I realize that I am responsible, I can choose to have the right feeling regardless of what the situation is outside. Suddenly it is very liberating, provided I experience it within myself. Then I can see it as something that is, you know, you wonder why or how you were not able to see it. It is so simple. But then again, when you, even though now you have experienced it, now that keeping up to it every moment may seem like an effort. Because as we said in step five, we are not asking this question. Am I basing this decision of my feeling on right understanding? 
or am I basing it on assumptions? So when I ask myself that question, then I may become conscious of the fact that many of the assumptions that I believe to be true may not be in line with reality. And therefore, I keep having feelings in accordance with my assumption without being aware of my assumption. And so again, I am sometimes happy, sometimes unhappy. Even though at the level of the feeling I can see this, sometimes I still feel helpless that even though I know that having this kind of feeling is going to be a cause of unhappiness for me, yet I seem to be powerless sometimes and I seem to continue to have that feeling. That's because I haven't evaluated my assumptions. I'm still assuming something to be true, which may not be true, which may not be in line with right understanding. So that makes it very clear that I need to work for right understanding. It is not sufficient to just try to have the right feeling at this moment. Because again, it slips. Again, I'm unaware. Again, I don't refer to my natural acceptance. And again and again, I have to make that effort until I'm able to have my assumption set right, have it in line with the right understanding, the acceptance that I have of the reality, of the situations, of the people. When I set them right, when I have them in line with what it really is, then I will see this, this constant doubting of intention that I have. Seeing everybody as separate from me, seeing all of reality as all of this existence as independent units, not seeing the relationship that will keep, you know, driving the feeling that I have. So it is all interlinked. This process where we are working our ways up slowly through all the steps, and at the same time, referring to our natural acceptance, trying to have more and more of that view of the reality that is true for all, not a consequence of my assumptions, my acceptances that I believe to be true, but may not be true. So certainly I need to have this right understanding. So then in step six, we ask this question. Since it is important for me to understand, to have the right understanding, to ensure the right feeling at all times, then it is also important for me to see which are these feelings that are natural for me, those feelings that are naturally acceptable, those that I want to have all the time. So we ask this question, whether the feeling of relationship or the feeling of opposition is naturally acceptable to me, whether the feeling of harmony or the feeling of disharmony is naturally acceptable to me whether the feeling of coexistence or the feeling of struggle is naturally acceptable to me. And the answers to these questions seem very self-explanatory. But again, just observe within you, are you just accepting this as information? Because if we are doing that and we are not bringing it in our living, then it will make no difference to our state of 
happiness or unhappiness. So then in step 6b, we could see that we need to ensure the right understanding. That is understanding of relationship, understanding of harmony, understanding of coexistence. So we asked this question or we said that what we really need to do for this is ultimately we need to contemplate on the relationship, on the participation. We need to understand the harmony, the self-organization within every unit. And we need to realize the coexistence. That need is there. Our competence may be lacking. But at least if we are certain that this is the task to work for, that it is worth doing, then we will take the step towards it. If not, if we have assumed that this is all just words and it doesn't mean much. So we keep hearing this question, you know, what are we going to do for it? Because somewhere we may have assumed that without doing a practice with a certain posture or with a certain being in a certain situation and so on, it may not be possible. But essentially the task that is being done is the same. You can approach it from many different ways. But ultimately that task has to be done within. And initially we may need different kinds of environments for it. But ultimately all that we are trying to do is trying to realize the coexistence, the way things are, the way it is. And for that, we need to be able to even see space. So this is what every method is trying. And of course, there are many methods. This is one such method. Yesterday, we had asked to reflect on these feelings within us and try to see in our everyday living what kind of feelings we are having? Are they in line? Are they not in line? And um, yesterday there was a chat uh, question. Uh, if we can talk about the difference between contemplation and reflection. So essentially in usual uh, ways of speaking, we entertain the two or we use the two for the same thing. But here, when we are talking of the activity of contemplation, then we are particularly referring to the relationship between all the units, between myself and other units. And we are referring to my role, particularly seeing my role, my participation in the larger order. That is the meaning of the activity of contemplation. But when we say reflect on, we could be reflecting on all the activities in B1. We could be reflecting on the activities in B2 and so on. We could be churning that within us. Again, there are two other words that one should be aware of, thinking and observing. So when I am thinking about something, thought is at the level of B2. So I may keep thinking about things and not be observing what I am thinking. See, the observation is from a higher point where I can see I am the one who is seeing the thought. But when I'm thinking, I may not be able to see myself as more than the thought. And I may think that I'm the thought, if that makes sense to you. 
tell if there are questions or if there are um, any observations about the assignment that we gave yesterday or any questions on this past uh, whatever we have discussed. Abhika, namaste, Didi. Namaste. Uh, Didi, actually, Didi, one of my husband's student <coughs> gave a Christmas cake to us, Didi. So on return, I just wanted to give her some sweet. And I was just checking for vessels at my home, Didi, a vessel with a lid. And I couldn't find. So ultimately, I gave her back with a plastic seed box. Then after mm -hmm. that, Didi, I was thinking so much about what happened to those uh, ever silver vessels with the lid. And I couldn't find one at my kitchen. Then I start to remember I have given those vessels with lid of different sizes from small to big one to my mother, to my sister, to my neighbors and to my some of my relatives. And I didn't get back, Didi. So I was worrying about those vessels, Didi. And I was comparing with myself. If someone gives me something, even after a year, I will return the same. I will not use that vessel at all. I will keep it aside and I will return to them even after a year with some sweet or at least with sugar. So I was comparing my, with myself, Didi, and I was worrying about all those vessels that are not at home, Didi. So I was feeling ashamed when I am working on myself for a <laughs> higher uh, order or a, for a noble cause. I was just worrying about those vessels, Didi. Yes. So I thought, uh, and I was not in relationship with for those persons who they didn't return me the vessel. And I was not also at Harmony, Didi. Yes. So yesterday I could observe clearly, Didi. But Didi, the question is why I am worrying about those vessels, Didi. That <laughs> was a big torture to me, Didi, yesterday. Yes. So again, you know, this question you have to ask yourself. See, right in the beginning, we say three things are essential for us. Right understanding, relationship and physical facility in that priority. Mm-mm. Now you can see that we have so many assumptions where this priority gets disturbed. When that priority gets disturbed and mm. we give priority to something, we give higher priority to something that is of lower priority, mm. then with that we are having the feeling. And when we have that feeling, our thoughts are also going in that direction. So my assumption, my perception of the reality was wrong. Therefore, my feeling also was in line with that perception, which is not the reality. Therefore, I went in line with that. My thoughts were more for the physical facility than for mm. other things of higher priority. Therefore, that whole cascade. Therefore, the unhappiness. Because ultimately, mm. we should be able to see that whenever I have a feeling that is not naturally acceptable, I am bound to be unhappy. There is no way mm. that I can change that. Mm. That is certain. That is fixed. We can see it within ourselves, isn't it? Gee, Didi. Didi, the hardest part is I couldn't accept Didi for my mother and my sisters also. I was thinking, <laughs> why they are not pretending like that? Really, Didi? I'm very ashamed to share this, Didi. Even for my mother, Didi. I think <laughs> she's having two of my vessels like that. I could recall that also, Didi. I'm really ashamed to share also, Didi. But that happened, Didi. Yeah. So, uh, important thing for us to do is, now see, one is, first of all, we need not have a feeling of opposition. Mm -hmm. The moment I think like this, I can also think another way, isn't it? That perhaps mm -hmm. they got busy, maybe the, the vessel got hidden somewhere inside, they are not aware that they have that vessel still, they didn't return. 
I don't see all that. Mm. I just go with that feeling of opposition. When I have feeling of opposition, my thoughts will also go in that direction. Isn't it? So, sorry, Didi. Let me add one more thing also, Didi. I am thinking of asking it back also, Didi. Yeah. So there's nothing wrong in asking for it back. Mm, you can mm. certainly say, you know, that I was missing that. Do you have it? Just ask that simple question. I needed that vessel, and I was wondering, did you have it by any chance? Can you return it if you have it? But we don't do that <laughs> because yes, of this feeling of opposition within us. We keep getting disturbed, and we may spend a whole day doing all this and being unhappy about it. But we don't do that simple task of actually talking to that person, isn't it? But is it right to ask, Didi? A small boss. Why should I ask it back? Also, the thoughts are coming, Didi. Don't they think? Uh, something low of me if they, if i ask them back like that also see again not... another assumption playing out because i am so concerned about what the other might think of about me mm -hmm. that i am basing my decision on that if you see there is nothing wrong in asking for a small container mm -hmm. back if I think that I need it, there is no problem in asking for it. If mm -hmm. I think that I have more than about, more than enough, and I think that that's fine, whether they keep it in their house or I keep it in my house, that's also fine. Then mm -hmm. I don't get disturbed with that. So the question is not about, is it right to ask for it or is it not right to ask for it? Question is, what am I giving priority to the mm -hmm. relationship? or the physical facility isn't it mm, if mm. i can see that i have abundant i mm. have an abundance then i am very willing to share mm, mm. but if i don't have that feeling of prosperity i will keep you know it will bother me so if i you know see it as oh it's a small dabba and it's in you know, the family only something, suppose they have to give you something, they might use the same vessel and give it back. Some people do that also. Mm -hmm. They might keep the vessel till they can return with something that they mm -hmm. have cooked. And if that doesn't happen in a reasonable time, the vessel mm -hmm. may stay with them and so many other, you know, things like that. So question is not about the actual activity that happened the question is about at the base of it what were my thoughts what were, was my feeling and perhaps that my feeling was based on various assumptions that i had about you know the outside world about other people about myself isn't it mm -hmm. So it's very good that we are becoming aware of these small instances because becoming aware that there is an issue helps me to work for improving myself, mm. moving towards self-development. Mm. If I assume that the other is responsible for my unhappiness, then I don't do any work on myself mm. and I keep blaming the other. Mm -hmm. So the very fact that we are able to observe this small disturbance within, mm -hmm. it is important to see that and it is important to go beyond that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Nice. If all the self are treated equally, why do we have a relationship and bonding and why do we make it? There was an additional feeling with the close relationship. Say, for example, husband as we talk mutual fulfilling i feel only the other self that is my husband can only fulfill so there comes a dependency so in that case some feelings some longings i cannot expect from all the self i can, what should i do Didi? yeah so see many words if you see what you mentioned 
we haven't really understood relationship mm -hmm. because what happens is we assume a relationship with our immediate family mm -hmm. and we assume we don't have a relationship with the people outside of that boundary mm. but really speaking when we get to seeing it we'll be able to see that the relationship is already there with everybody it's not like you have to make effort for it it's God just that it. you have to be able to see it you have to be able to understand it and you have to be able to see your role in it even hmm. now even with the people that we have assumed to be in relationship with hmm. we are expecting the right feeling from them mm -hmm. we are expecting that right feeling all the time because we there is a void within us we don't have the right feeling within so we are like trying to get it from outside from here and there so the dependency mm -hmm. now consider a situation where you have the right feeling within you and with that right feeling you think about giving in the relationship rather than getting mm -hmm. you think of helping the other you think okay. of being with the right feeling and then having concern for the other can you see that is a different state isn't it true true now you are not dependent on the other rather you are helping the other Mm -hmm. you are self sufficient but at the same time you are helping the other you will mm -hmm. still have you know the recognition and fulfillment with the other but mm -hmm. this will be based on understanding this will not be based on an assumption right now we are basing it on an assumption this assumption is that if we have relationship with all this one will not lose its significance on the contrary when we have a feeling of relationship for all we have concern for all right now if we see we have over evaluated one relationship and we have under evaluated other relationships mm -hmm. but if we evaluate it correctly if we have the right evaluation we will okay. see that we are related to all how but we uh, one second how we um, bring it in our living Mm -hmm. in our interaction our responsibilities our roles with various people in the actual behavior there may be some variety we may not behave in the same way with all but certainly the feeling can be the same with all like for instance if i have a feeling of relationship for all i will have concern for all even for people who are not there now there are people in china who might be suffering from covid and lot of people having problems i will feel some sympathy some compassion for them but not necessary that i am going to go there and do something for them because i have certain roles responsibilities here where i am and i will fulfill those with the people that you know i am connected to i am interlinked with with whom i am uh, having day to day interactions i may not do anything for those who are far away with whom i am not interacting on a daily basis but certainly i can have feeling of compassion for them because the feeling is within me at all times isn't it the true dili there are differences in terms of the roles there are differences in terms of responsibilities that we have taken over as a part of our role but one can have the right feeling for all mm -hmm. in fact when we, to... when we when we talk of the feeling of love that feeling is for all units not just human beings 
isn't it do it by having the right feeling within and then using the body to express it mm-hmm. to the other have concern for the other help the other see your complementarity where the other is lacking that i can only do if i build my competence okay. but if my competence is only lacking then i am dependent on the other for having the right feeling and the moment the other doesn't say the other is in a bad mood now what happens now i don't get the right feeling i become unhappy hmm isn't it when i participate in the larger order i can see that i will look at what is what what kind of complementarity can i have with the other like i have shared earlier also there is this example of our ex president uh, abdul kalam ji somebody asked him that sir when he was in office so many situations keep happening so much turmoil so many decisions you have to make so much has to be done and people say all kinds of things and how come you are always smiling how is it that you don't get disturbed by all this and he said that whenever in whatever situation i may be i only have one question to ask them and that is what besides so they were curious to know what is this so they asked him what is that question sir so he said that question is how can i help then there is no reason for disturbance because my focus is on my role my focus is not what i can get from the other my focus is on how i can be complementary to the other so that kind of uh, when i am seeing from there then i can see i mean i am not trying to find out if there is a relationship i have already seen that there is a relationship i just have to understand it live with it and be complementary to all others and i will see that that is where my happiness lies because when i have the right feeling then i am happy whenever i have a feeling that is not naturally acceptable i will be unhappy that we have to get to be able to seeing within us yes still several hands are there but what we'll do is we'll go for a few minutes observation on this and then i'll take up um the other discussions with everyone else so and we'll try to observe these feelings within us and try to see these feelings are they naturally acceptable to us or not these feelings of relationship these feelings of harmony feeling of coexistence let us see if our feelings are in line with these or our feelings are something different we'll reflect on this for a few minutes and then we'll come back to the observations namaste didi namaste <laughs> this is regarding the observation the task given yesterday mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, while finding the trying to see the relationship yes mm-hmm. i have given the relationship for every other person at all mm-hmm. times it includes my family members friend and relatives and even i find relationship with the workers i mean daily wagers those working for me Mm-hmm. but then find a difference there i am concerned more for my family members but not daily wager wagers mm-hmm. but still <clears throat> there is some i find some relationship mm-hmm. and there is a there is a, a relationship for all everybody yeah and, and say let us check that feeling of relationship that we are seeing that we have with all 
-hmm. See, if I am having some disturbance within, that means I am not in harmony, isn't it? Yes, yes. If I am not in harmony, first thing I need to do is to become aware of the feeling that I am having at the moment when I have the disharmony. Check mm -hmm. what is that feeling. Is it really feeling of relationship at that moment when the disharmony is there? Because see, my feeling keeps changing. When things outside are fine, I may see that I have a feeling that is one of relationship. But now when somebody has behavior to the contrary, I may not react outside, right? In order mm -hmm. to keep, maintain the harmony of the family, I may decide not to react outside. I may decide not to express my reaction outside. But inside myself, I know what is happening, isn't it? Yes. yes. So, so check if I am not able to see that harmony within, if I am not calm and comfortable within, if there is some disturbance within, that means I am not in harmony within. I am reacting in, inside, even though I may not have expressed it outside. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Sometimes it happens, like at work, somebody says something harshly, say it is my superior, my boss, and I am not able to answer that back, that person back. Or there is a fear that that person may say something to me and may ask me to leave or something. I'm not saying personally for you, I'm just giving an example. Uh -huh. In such situations, I may not answer the person back right there. But inside me, there may be a lot of disturbance, a lot of contradiction, a lot of feeling of opposition for the other. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I carry that feeling of opposition back with me, even when I go home. And with that feeling of opposition, I react, even though there was no need to react, with the family members, because I've carried my feeling back. Happens, no? Sometimes? Yes. 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 So, one is the behavior outside. More importantly is the feeling at the base, which is driving the thoughts and ultimately the behavior outside. So, we may not be reacting outside, but more important than the reaction outside. It is good that we are not reacting outside because it helps to maintain the harmony of the situation outside for some time. But more importantly, if I am reacting inside, then this is of huge significance to me because I am disturbed within, I am unhappy. So my experience of the whole situation, even if the outside was calm, my experience is not a happy one, isn't it? And that is important to me. So yes. check again that, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. But uh, observe first and foremost if I am comfortable or uncomfortable. If I am uncomfortable at any moment, there is a problem with my feeling. I need to check my feeling. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we'll go through this and we'll um, take it up tomorrow again. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll keep reflecting on these um, feelings within us and we'll take up your observations tomorrow again.